Okay, so with this, we still need a Curus. We need a left Pauldron. We need a left Gauntlet. And Greaves. And a Helmet. We need a lot for the Daedric set. Would you like to go? All right, there's a possibility that ordinators will try to attack me on sight here now. See what happens when I talk to him. No, we good? Okay. Donzo and Duelists. Quickly, did you want to meet the Archcanon? The Archcanon is in his private quarters, and he very much wishes to speak with you, but I am to warn you. Avoid confrontations with the Ordinators at all costs. The Archcanon has spoken with the High Thane Ordinators, but if you are wanted criminal, they may try to arrest you. If the blood of faithful servants of the temple is spilled, it will make a reconciliation all that much more difficult. Okay, private quarters. He's waiting alone to speak with you in his private quarters. His private quarters are in the southern half of the east chapel of the High Thane, but there are ordinators at the entrances of both the east and west chapels. Okay. There is a private back entrance to Serioni's private quarters. Perhaps you might also sneak past the ordinators by stealth or magic. Ordinators are highly trained, and sneaking past them, even aided by magic, may be very difficult. But if you have any art in stealth or magic, you should use it to avoid trouble. Okay. I mean, is this what I'm supposed to go into? The High Fane. Okay. Who am I supposed to talk to? He's in his private quarters. I don't know what his name is.
Okay, this might be him. Okay, that must be the back entrance that they were talking about. Thank you for coming, Analog Vernacular. You know the temple's doctrine on the Nerevarine. Perhaps it is time to change that doctrine. The temple must protect the people from false doctrines, and your association with Imperial Intelligence makes your motivations and integrity suspect. But you have been chosen, Hortator, in Nerevarine by the Dunmer. And we have reached a crisis with Dagathur. We can no longer defend the people against the Awakened Six. House. You and your prophecies may represent our last hope. Our situation is desperate, but I would rather have you hear the details of our situation and the circumstances leading up to that situation from Lord Vivek himself. He is asked to see you. Would you agree to a private meeting with him and hear in person what he has to say? Yes, I will meet with Vivek, the god. Good. Here are two keys, one to the private back entrance to my quarters, the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivek's palace. I regret that at present the Ordinators are not completely under my control, so for now, I'll ask you to avoid confrontations with them. Lord Vivek is expecting you. His lordship is remarkably patient, but perhaps it would be better not to keep him waiting? Okay. I want to open this myself. And first try. Gotta love it. Like a boss. And this is Vivek himself. We are about to meet a god. I expected you. We have business, you and I. When I was young like you, I was very impatient, so I will keep our business short. Then later, there may be time for other things. First, I propose to remove my curse upon the Nerevarine. End the persecution of the dissident priests and proclaim to all Marwin that Analog Vernacular is the incarnate and Nerevarine, the prophesied savior, Marwin, and the last hope to withstand the menace of Dagath Ur and the Sixth House. These things I will do, whether you wish or not. Next, I propose to surrender to you the power and responsibility of defeating Dagath Orr. You may choose to refuse. I will not compel you. You will receive the power as a gift, in the form of an artifact called Wraithguard. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. You will receive the responsibility as an oath. You may give your oath, then keep it or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraithguard as a gift? I do. I accept Wraithguard. Good. Sensible of you. And now, will you give your oath, before all gods and men, before all spirits visible and invisible, before my honor and your honor, to dedicate yourself and Wraithguard to the defeat and destruction of Dagath Orr, and the preservation of Morrowind and its people? Maybe. It depends. A sensible response. Alas, I am not looking for someone sensible. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that you will not find Wraithguard of much use to you, for without your oath I shall not teach you how to use it. So that concludes our interview. I hope it has not been an inconvenience, and if you change your mind, come back. Alright. Alright, I'll accept. I so swear. Not very sensible, but very good. I was hoping for someone who would have no hesitations about making such an oath. You will now have a brief, momentary sensation of time passing. Don't be alarmed. You are being taken out of time in order to avoid the unpleasant experience of learning how to use Wraithguard. It will be over before. There is a brief sensation of motion in total darkness, floating, but without a sense of weight or direction. You know it. Now, I will notify the temple that you are our champion. 
there shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. We have time for questions if you like, or you may leave, as you wish, but I think you are at least two things. There are two, at least two things you ought to know before you leave. How to use Wraithguard, and how to defeat Dagathor. A unique Dwemer artifact has been removed from your inventory? What? Huh, I don't know what that's about. Defeat Dagathor. To defeat Dagathor, go to Red Mountain to recover the artifact Hammer, Sunder, from the Gate Citadel, Vemino. Then recover the artifact Blade, Keening, Keening from the Gate Citadel, Odrasal. Then proceed with Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening to the Citadel of Dagathor. Within the Citadel, find the Heart of Lorcan. Use the three artifacts to sever Dagathur's connection to the Heart, and he will be destroyed, and the Blight ended in Morrowind. To destroy Dagathur, you must sever his connection with the Heart of Lorcan. To do this, strike the Heart with the artifact Hammer Sunder once, then strike the Heart more than once with the artifact Blade Keening. You must wear Wraithguard, because you cannot handle either Sunder or Keening unless you are wearing Wraithguard. That is the short, simple explanation. Here is the long, detailed explanation written down for your convenience. Read it, study it, commit it to memory. Okay. Council? You need to know, where is Dagath Ur? What are Dagath Ur's plans? Who are Dagath Ur's servants? Who is Dagath Ur? What are Dagath Ur's powers? What is known about Dagath Ur's defenses? How can I prepare you prepare for battle against Dagath Ur? Who can help? Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Who can help? Ordinators and Boyan Arminger stationed at Ghostgate have the most practical knowledge of the nightmare world inside the ghost fence. Seek them in my name for counsel and aid. Okay, where's Dagath Ur? He has never ventured out of the Heart Chamber, the place under Red Mountain where the Heart of Lorcan lies. It is there or nearby that he is constructing a new god, a Kulakon, also known as Second Numidu Numidium. Okay. And what is his plan? We know nothing for sure, but we have learned much from interrogating Six House cultists and victims of dream compulsions. And from our study of Dagath Ur's actions, the, Dempl the Temple Scholars and Inquisitors have prepared a document. Dagath Ur's plans that summarizes what we know or suspect. Take this copy. It's also available in my library. Okay. Dagath Ur's servants. Chief among his servants are his seven brothers, the Ash Vampires, powerful heart rites, heart whites, and cunning sorcerers of old. These creatures appear to die but always are revived at the heart. Somehow Dagath Ur has conferred some portion of his immortality upon them. Or perhaps they sustain themselves through more conventional sorcery. Okay. Dagathur himself? Chief, uh, oh, Dagathur is the former, lo the former Lord High Counselor of House Dagath. He was of Lord Nerevar's generation, older than we, and a mighty sorcerer and enchanted in life. In his sustained shadow immortality, he appears to be a highly intelligent, severely deluded immortal monster with unparalleled supernatural abilities. He appears by turns lucid and deranged, compassionate and bestial, profoundly wise and profoundly distorted, disordered. In short, he is a mad god. What about his powers? He is able to send his mind into the dreams of susceptible victims across vast distances, the victims are either swayed by his compulsions or driven mad. He also seems nearly invulnerable to physical and magical harm. His flesh and the flesh of his followers evolves towards immutable magical form. Dagathur and the highest ranks can control the distorted manifestations of their flesh. Lower ranks lose control of their bodies and become mindless corpus monsters. Okay, his defenses? Confer with the Ordinators and Boyan Armagers, Garrison Ghostgate. Okay. Okay, prepare for battle. 
Prepare for war. Beyond the ghost fence, there are no safe places, no allies. Stockpile resources. Plan for retreat and replenishment. Quest for artifacts of power. Okay. We already know about your library. In my library, I've made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain. My own true account, and another false account common among the Ashlanders, and preserved in the Apocrypha. I don't care whether you believe my account or not. I leave it up to you to judge which is true. Okay. I wonder if that's the one that we found earlier on in the game or not. Who can help? Ordinators. Okay. I think we've gone through just about everything. What about business? Actually, I believe we finished our business. I will notify the temple that you are our champion. There shall be no more persecution of the distant priests. Okay. Now you are my guest. I am your host, and we have time for explanations, or counsel, or questions, or bitter rec recriminations, if you like. Or you may leave. Okay, explanations. Why did I wage war on the Nervary? Why did I try to suppress the Apocrypha? Why did I persecute the distant priests? Why is Dagoth Ur winning the war? How does the tribunal fight Dagoth Ur? What are the Wraith Guard's powers? Wraith Guard's powers. War on the Nervarine? Why did I try to kill you? Because you threatened the faith of my followers, and I needed their faith to hold back the darkness. And I thought you were my enemy. A pawn of the subtle Daedra Lord Azora. Or a pawn of Emperor Uriel Septim. Or a simple fraud, perhaps a hero. But not much of one if my faithful could destroy you. Now circumstances are altered. I need you and you need me. Okay? And why did you suppress the Apocrypha? Because it was such an unfortunate mixture of truth, falsehood, and speculation that I couldn't afford to manage the confused reaction of our faithful. Any doubt whatsoever weakened their faith, and we needed their faith to give us the power to maintain the ghost fence. In retrospect, perhaps, we lost the faith of those we most needed while preserving the faith of the meek and indifferent. Perhaps a mistake was made. Who can say? Okay, dissident priests. Suppression and persecution of dissident is just one of the standard tools of statecraft. I believe we erred in trusting the judgment of Beryl Sala. He and his ordinator served valiantly, valiantly in the war against Dagoth Ur. We mistook his misplaced zeal for energy and dedication. Mistakes were made, but no more. There shall be no more persecution of the distant priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. Okay, why is Dagathar winning? He is winning because he is close to the source of power, Lorcan's heart, and because he retains the passion of madness. While we have settled into the lonely and unrewarding posture of dogged dutifulness and perseverance. And finally, perhaps because he is stronger and smarter than we are, and his followers are more fervent and fanatical. I believe we were careless and complacent and outwitted, and in the matter of denying the Nerevarine, we were foolish. Okay, how does the tribunal fight Dagathur? In the past, the tribunal made seasonal campaigns to Red Mountain. We slew Dagathur and his kin, though the heart always revived them in time. Later, when we realized we couldn't destroy them, we created the ghost fence to contain the threat. These solutions were effective until Dagathur ambushed us and captured Sunder and Keeney. Since that time, our fortunes have waned as his increased. Okay, so he got the artifacts away from you. He got two of the three artifacts away from you. All of them but Wraithguard, apparently. What are Wraithguard's powers? Wraithguard's primary function is to protect the wearer from the fatal energies of the artifacts Sunder and Keeney. It also has minor protective enchantments against physical and magical damage that you may find useful. Okay. Bitter recrimination. You want to chide me. Why did I murder Nerevar? Why did I break my oath to Azura not to use Kogernok's tools? Why did I cause others to suffer? Absolutely I do. We did not murder Nerevar. The legend that we murder Nerevar comes from a story told by a shield companion to Nerevar. Alondro Sul, who lived among the Ashlanders. The Ashlanders have retained Alondro Sul's account as part of their oral histories. The account is persuasive in some details, implausible in others, and is in any case false. I have two accounts of Nerevar's death here in my library. Read them and judge for yourself. 
Hmm, I don't know if I believe him. Why did I break my oath to Azora and not to use Kagernok's tools? Along with Lord Nerevar, and at his insistence, Almalexia, Sothasil, and I swore before our gods of oaths, before our gods of oaths at the time, the Daedra Lord Azora, never to employ the tools of Kagernok for any purpose. We broke our oaths. We turned our backs on the old gods. I still see no compelling reason to worship any of the Aedra or Daedra. But, for the respect I held for Nerevar, and the respect I held for myself, I should never have betrayed my oath. Of all my life's actions, I most regret that failure. And why did I cause others to suffer? I respect that question, and you for it. The most I can say is I did the best I could, as I saw things. Can you, mortal, presume to judge the actions and motives of a god? But because I need you, and you need me, I will make an accounting for my sins to you. But not now. Destroy Dagathur, and then we will discuss my sins. Then perhaps you will have earned the right to judge me. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we got through the explanations. Questions. Did we get through all of those? What really happened at Red Mountain? Yep, made available too conflicting. Cool. What really happened to the Dwemer? I have no idea what happened to the Dwemer. I have no sense of them in the timeless divine world outside of mortal time, and in fact, if I did believe they existed, I would be in no hurry to make contact with them. They may, with some justice, hold the Dunmer race responsible for their fate. My intuition is that they are gone forever, and that is perfectly fine with me. Ouch. Okay. And what was the Dwemer's sin? The sin of the Dwemer was the creation of the new god from the substance of a dead god, Lorcan. That is also the sin for which we would destroy Dagathur. I hesitate to call it a sin. More properly, call it destructive evil. The sin of the Tribunal, however, is in the breaking of an oath to Azura to forbear from tapping the heart with Kagernak's tools, and in the folly of seeking to become gods. Breaking the oath was evil, becoming gods was folly. If we sinned, we have paid the price. What is it like to be a god? It is like being a juggler. Things are always moving, and you learn to know where they are without even thinking about it. Only there are many, many things moving, and sometimes, like any juggler, you drop something. I'm afraid it has become a lot more a matter of dropping things lately. There's too much to do and not enough time, and I'm losing my touch. Perhaps I'm growing old. It is a bit like being at one... Once awake and asleep, awake, I am here with you, thinking and talking. Asleep, I am very, very busy. Perhaps for other gods, the completely immortal ones, it is only like that being asleep, out of time. Me, I exist at once inside of time and outside of it. It's nice never being dead, too. When I die in the world of time, then I'm completely asleep. I'm very much aware that all I have to do is choose to wake, and I'm alive again. Many times I have very deliberately tried to wait patiently a very long, long time before choosing to wake up. And no matter how long it feels like, I wait. It always appears, when I wake up, that no time has passed at all. That is the God place. The place out of time where everything is always happening all at once. Do I remember being mortal? I remember. I do not feel it. I can, if I choose, remember the feeling, but I do not choose. It is very, very sad being mortal. There is happiness, yes, but mostly sadness. As I have said, count only the happy hours. For mortals, they are all too few, but for gods, for me, there is no more feeling, only knowing. Not quite no more feeling. I still want to win. I want to defeat Dagathor. Perhaps I have lost the feeling for the people, for the suffering. I don't want that feeling. It is of no use to me. That is no longer what matters to me. I only want not to lose. To lose would be very bitter. Okay. And how do I feel about the people uh, of Morrowind? I love the people of Morrowind. I became a god to make their lives more comfortable and secure. I am most close to my faithful followers. I am literally in their hearts and minds. I feel the most sympathy with House Redoran. They are Dunmer driven by creeds and deeds, like I am. 
How Cinderella is closer to the compassion and sympathy of Almalexia, a comfortable and secure serenity. How Salvani matches the disposition, the disposition of my brother Sotasil, iconoclastic, profane, unconventional. House Lalu represents the future of the Dunmer, integrated in the, into the sophisticated mainstream of the traditional, the traditionless, raceless, godless culture of the Empire. House Dress represents the past of the pre-tribunal Great House culture, a persistent traditional tradition of Daedra and ancestor-worshipping civil, civilized Dunmer clans. And I even love the Ashlanders for their per, per, preservation of the most ancient barbarian tribal traditions of the Dunmer who first settled, settled Morrowind. Okay, whew. Um, I am losing my voice reading all of this. So, with that, with listening to everything that Vivek has to say, we're gonna stop there. All right, I'm back, it's a new day. It's a new day. We have met a god. And we have received Wraithguard. So this is Wraithguard right here. So armor rating is only 24, but it has a constant effect, several constant effects. Uh, shield, reflect 20%, resist blight, um, which that doesn't really matter because we already should resist that. Um, we can't get blight, so resist shock, fire, frost, magicka, and poison. Boom. So our overall armor rating is going to go down with that. We're getting 140 with this, but we're going to put this on and we're going to get 134. Um, so between that and, yeah, I wonder if that stacks. Are we getting a reflect like 30% or 40% then? We might be getting a reflect 40%. I'm not sure if that stacks or not. Let's see. Fortify skill, reflect 20 and 20. It looks like it stacks. Cool. So Marara's Ring and Wraithguard are uh, going to do that for us, huh? So I'm guessing these are the notes that he already gave us. Um, I'm going to wait to read those because, well, frankly, um, I did a ton of reading yesterday when I recorded that last bit, and I need a break from it. So um, we're not going to be reading those, although they're probably just going to go over a lot of the same stuff that we already know. Um, but hey, um, the ordinators aren't mad at us anymore, so that's good. So at this point, what do we want to do? I may want to take a break from um, main story for just a little bit. Because basically the next thing that we're going to be doing is going to the Red Mountain itself and um, going after Dagathur, so um, going through the Ghost Gate. Dagathur, look, he's marked now. Veminal. I don't remember what that is. Odrosal. Hmm. I'm not sure why those two are marked, but that's okay. All right, let's take a look at our journal and see if there are things that we want to work on. So one thing that we could do is try to find out uh, more about um, the the people, what are they called? The Lantern people. I forget the name, but the, the people who are basically anti-slavers. I kind of want to do their quest line. Um, we haven't done a lot of Mage's Guild stuff. Maybe we should do some uh, Mage's Guild stuff for a while. Um, we didn't get very far in that. We could also work on some of the Daedra quests. We also haven't done the pil pilgrimage for the temple. Who are we supposed to talk to for this one? In return, she suggested I visit her friend Emuset in Telerune. Okay. We could do that. Um, we could just, like, knock some things off of our list here. Maybe we go to Telerune, knock that one off of our list since uh, we haven't done that one. And just see what we can accomplish. 
We could also start Imperial Cult stuff over in Evanheart if we really wanted to. But maybe Mage's Guild and then just some of these other uh, uh, random quests that we have left. And we'll do those for a while before going to main quest. And we will be doing DLC as well. So we have both DLCs still to do. Um, which one of them gives us a whole other island to explore. Um, this right over here. So that's cool. I've never done the DLCs. Um, I played the original Xbox version of this game. And to be honest with you. Um, this is the furthest I've ever gotten in the main story. Um, in my original playthrough on the Xbox. I kind of got soft blocked out of the main story. Um, I got stuck at the um, being named the Hortator for House Rhetoran because I had accidentally killed somebody who was important and then they wouldn't name me Why Hortator, what? so... You can run. All right, tell a rune. Why walk when you can ride? How's my weight doing? We're doing okay on that front. Let's see. So there's Aldrun. Where was Telerune again? Oh, Telerun is one of the islands, isn't it? This is Telerun. <sighs> My bad. Okay, let's go to the Mage Guild then. And we'll go to Sadrith Mora. I don't know where to begin. It is such an honor to meet you. I kind of want to find somebody who can train me in athletics. How are you? And just like max that out <laughs> as much as I can with them. Okay, let's get to the boat. We'll go to Telerune. We could freaking walk to Telerune if we really wanted to. It's not that far away. It's that right there, so maybe I'll do that. set, huh? know if it's a shop owner or not. Alright, well, we'll just, uh, try and find her. Um, what is this? Okay, let's check out the plot and pastor. Plaster. Words are hard. Emuset! Look at that! I don't think we've been introduced, Outlander. I'm Emuset Brackus. How can I help you? What can you train? Cool. Some pretty good stuff. Let's save before we How do this. You, friend. Okay. Mari Army. Ah, so you're the one who brought Mari and Nellos together. Nothing has been seen or heard of them since then. But the bards are singing songs of their love. Well done, Analog Vernacular. Please, take these as a token of my gratitude. Three exclusive restore health has been added. Mari and Nellos. I'm sure they'll be very happy together. Alright, that probably closes that one out. That's literally all we had to do. Teach me everything you can about restoration. Got it. 
that's a good place. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end it there. I don't want to over level or anything. Okay, so that one should be off of our list now. That's part of DLC. Oh. I didn't even know that we hadn't finished the stuff with Angoth the Jeweler. He asked me to bring him a copy of the book Withershins. He thinks Miles Glissorius and Margon Tradehouse has a copy. Okay. Why do I always get Molagmar and Margan confused? Margan is like... Where is Margan? Is that the one that's up here? Yeah, okay. That's Margan. Alright. Um, I don't even know where my recall is right now, so let's find out. Um, there you are. Oh, Aldrun. This is not a bad place to be, actually. It's right by Margan. Do we have anything we need to sell? No, I think we're pretty clear on that front. Mind your tongues. All right, Angoth the Jeweler is the one that's here, right? So if that's the case, maybe we'll um, mark here. The ash dog. And then we'll head up to Margan. Is there something I can do for you? Hey, old friend! So this one's at the trade house. And we're looking for wither ships. So this is the outpost, right? The trade house, I think, is up here to the left. Something you would love. Through here. What do you train? Now, where is my light armor in comparison to medium armor now? So medium armor, we've got a 40. And light armor is at 84. Okay. May your battle show only victory, friend. Have wither shins. Tell your friends about this place. Nobody here. Okay, let's check the people downstairs. Nice. I don't know if I can help you, but I'll try. Possible it's in there. Miles. Is that you? Yeah, okay. Speak freely, friend. Okay. Probably the level 70 chest, right? You 
saw nothing. Easy enough. Did you get a copy of Withershins? Yes, here it is. This is the right book, Analog Vernacular. I'll give you a fair price for it. How does a thousand septum sound? Maybe I should have read it first. Um, okay. You got any other jobs? What do you want, Master Thief? Okay, guess not. There we go, and with that, I think we are finally done with the Thieves' Guild quests. There we go, another one off. Sleepers Awake, what is this? Okay, this is, uh... Not anything we really need to worry about. Let's see. Mentana, a Daedrith monarch, has grown lazy. If I kill Mentana in his dungeon, Corridor, returning his soul to the Outer Realms where Molag Ball can punish him, then Molag Ball will reward me well. Okay, but it gives me no indication of where he's going to be. If I can find the last of the Orain family bloodline and kill him, I will be rewarded with the helm. Okay. Kidnapped by cultists. Oh yeah, we couldn't find him, huh? Yeah, he was supposed to be east of the shrine, but we never found him. Um, nope, I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, let's go ahead and work on Mage's Guild stuff, huh? Okay. Tashbi Ashabel is a necromancer. Ronis wants me to kill Tashbi Ashabel. She lives in Margan. Okay. Should have looked at that one while we were there, huh? But it's easy enough to get back. Bunch of houses here. Nashby, right there. Don't tempt faces. All right, this is who we're looking for, right? Kill Tashby. Is Rannis the one that's in um, Wolverine Hall? I think so. Go ahead, Outlander. What do you need? Necromancy? I am not a necromancer. Who said I was a necromancer? Rannis Athras. Oh, I see. I refuse to join the Mages Guild. I chose to practice healing among my people, away from the politics of the Guild. Since I was a Velothi and not well-born like Rannis. Well, it's not important now. Maybe I know a way out of this situation? Tell me. If Rannis has held a grudge this long, it would be best for me to leave for the mainland. There are plenty of towns that could use a healer. Tell Rannis Athras that I am dead. I will leave Vardenfell, and Rannis need never know. Okay. Sure. Very well. I'll leave for the mainland once I get a few things together. Report back to Rannis Athras that I am dead. Alright, I'm going to... If I find anything that contradicts her here... That... Okay. I don't think I'm seeing anything that would indicate that she is a necromancer. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Seventh Son, Ivan K, Len, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, and Jordan and Emily Hill. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.